Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be turning the world's deadliest diseases into character designs. The first disease I want to talk about is prion disease, a subclass of diseases that is 100% incurable and fatal. A prion is essentially a misfolded protein, and because it inspires other proteins in your brain to continue misfolding like the prion itself, it causes intense damage to your brain. Prion diseases can be contracted from cannibalism or from consuming meat from cannibal animals. One of the most well-known prion diseases is mad cow, which came about because of the cruel practices of factory farmers feeding their cattle their own like scrap from slaughterhouses, and this caused mad cow disease. One prion disease that was heavily associated with human-to-human -human cannibalism was called kuru, but it was also known by another name laughing sickness, because it caused the sufferers to laugh uncontrollably. This is why I'm drawing this character laughing herself. I also designed her hair to look like prions. They have this strange spiralized shape, and I thought that it would be interesting to have it mimicked in both her hair as well as on the ribbon on her fork. I also tried to keep that spiraling, swirling kind of shape throughout the image, including on her skirt. Another prominent prion disease is Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, named after the German neurologist who initially published papers about it. It causes aggressive damage to the brain and usually is accompanied by symptoms of psychosis, hallucinations, blindness, confusion, uh, anxiety, paranoia, um, basically everything bad that can happen with your mind, uh, it starts happening because there's all this damage occurring to the brain and it progresses very quickly. This is a disease that people very rarely survive for more than a year after they are initially diagnosed. I think prions are particularly terrifying because they can't even be sterilized off of medical tools by traditional methods. The World Health Organization actually recommends that any medical tool that has come into direct contact with infected tissue just be destroyed afterwards. And though prion disease is very rare, because it is completely incurable and there's nothing anyone can do, and it's so aggressive, you have usually like months or weeks uh, to survive it, I think that this disease is absolutely terrifying. It's also really hard to test for. There aren't good ways to figure out for sure if you have the disease until it's quite advanced usually. Um, in particular with CJD, there are really not very many specific early symptoms and it's not until you're starting to have severe memory loss, difficulty walking and moving your body normally, and other more terrifying symptoms. That's the point at which you sort of know that you have this disease. After death, they can detect if someone had a prion disease sometimes by looking at the brain tissue and seeing if there's sort of a spongy texture to it where there are lots of little holes caused by nerve death from the prions damaging the brain, but obviously you can't cut a piece of someone's brain out while they're still alive. Um, that's not really an option, so it makes it really hard to know for sure what's really going on until things have gotten quite advanced. Next up, Marburg virus. This is a viral hemorrhagic fever, and it is very deadly. My primary inspiration here is the fact that during the Cold War, the Soviet Union actually researched Marburg virus as a potential bioweapon. That's already pretty terrifying, the idea of intentionally releasing an illness like this in order to damage a country. But to make matters worse, Marburg virus has some particularly terrifying symptoms. Marburg virus is a hemorrhagic fever, so there are a lot of bleeding-related symptoms involved in this particular diagnosis. It can cause the vomiting of blood, bruising, internal bleeding, bleeding in the eyes, as well as a variety of other debilitating symptoms. In late stages of this disease, especially when someone is going to die from it, they may experience psychosis, convulsions, coma, as well as a variety of other really painful symptoms like fibromyalgia. 
I showed the rash um, that is possible on this character underneath his glove. I kind of tried to design him um, like he is sort of hiding it because it was a secret that the Soviet Union was looking into this virus uh, for defensive and offensive reasons. Luckily, it seems that they never were able to or chose to use this disease against anyone, though there was a defector who said that they were close. Clinically, the symptoms of Marburg virus are very, very similar to Ebola, and like Ebola, they're also associated with bats. It seems that Egyptian fruit bats are the primary um, natural carrier of this virus. There is no approved vaccine for Marburg virus, and it is also fatal in most cases. There are some things that people can do to support people who are infected with it, but in general it's just the regular stuff like making sure that they're not dehydrated and trying to get them antibiotics if they have other infections that are being caused by all of the symptoms of Marburg virus. Fortunately, this virus is pretty rare and is not overly contagious because it does not aerosolize, so it doesn't end up floating through the air on people's breath. Typically, human-to-human -human, um, passing of Marburg virus can happen through contact with infected fluids like their blood. I gave him a literal bat wing because bats are the primary carrier of this disease, as well as implying the shape of a bat wing very subtly onto the collar of his jacket. For the rest of his design decisions, I tried to just really focus on the like drippy bleeding uh, feature of this disease, as well as modeling, of course, his entire uh, costume or uniform off of the uniforms that soldiers wore in the Cold War in the Soviet Union. I made his the whites of his eyes red because of the bleeding that can occur in the middle stages of Marburg virus, and I have him pulling his glove off again as a way to sort of so, show the secrecy of this um, bioweapons program. Uh, a lot of the history of Marburg virus involves some kind of laboratory mistake or laboratory leak. In fact, it was initially discovered uh, in the city it's named for in Marburg because a bunch of laboratory workers came into contact with infected tissue from rivet monkeys and this caused the first outbreak that we know of. Um, that's why it's named Marburg virus. Despite the scariness and the showiness of the bleeding symptoms, the most dangerous parts of Marburg virus are actually things like necrosis, as well as um, organ failure that can come about by the organs not being able to like properly work. So that's why I have him sort of like disintegrating down um, in the gut area because that's the part that actually kills you. Next we're talking about rabies, a terrifying disease that is passed through the bites of animals. Rabies is a very clever disease. It has a lot of symptoms that help it pass to even more animals and humans. In many cases, rabies causes aggression, which makes it more likely that the animal infected will bite someone. Additionally, when you have rabies, it becomes impossible to swallow, which causes that foaming of the mouth and overproduction of saliva. This is a major factor in how it passes from a bite into somebody's body. There are actually two types of rabies, one of which makes you paralyzed and it actually like dramatically reduces your energy or your ability to even move, whereas the other one causes all types of sort of neurological symptoms. Um, there are strange phobias that pop up such as the fear of water, the aforementioned aggression, and paranoia. I tried to put into her design the two major players when it comes to giving rabies to people. Um, in most countries, the primary way that you would get rabies is from a dog bite, though in nations where there has been an effort made to vaccinate dogs against rabies and make sure that feral dog populations do not become out of control, the primary way that people get rabies is from bats. So I tried to include both these dog skulls that I made a sort of like bustier out of, as well as these little bat wings on the edges of her arms. Um, this whole design was really... Uh, full of ideas. This was the first one that I ended up doing and uh, I definitely went pretty over the top with it. I have her um, experiencing some of the symptoms of rabies as well as sort of representing it as an abstract concept. I drew these chains on her to represent the uh, paralytic version of 
rabies where you are becoming paralyzed you are losing your ability to move um and then on her face and the rest of the energy of this character is really based around this like active rabies where um it is causing um a lot of uh, energy and aggression and um i just kind of tried to show her she looks like she'll bite you basically she looks like she bites for sure um and rabies is all about bites so that was the thing i really wanted to focus on with her i also tried to show um on other parts of her body like this mouth motif at the edge of her bodysuit um i ended up doing like some piping of a costume where um it almost looks like you know inflamed gums um and i put some like teeth uh, kind of spikes up um again to just sort of mimic that design of like the mouth the bite uh this is you know the main feature of this character so i really wanted to include that I also did this sort of like stylized birthmark design where it almost looks like a bite on her legs. Uh, the bite is the main design feature of this entire character design and it's such a big part of rabies and why it's terrifying. Rabies is a very old illness and I think that it has scared people for a really long time. Cujo is a famous short story about a rabid dog and um, just knowing that there is a disease that you can get through a bite, which is already a traumatic experience to be bitten by a wild animal, but then to be infected with something like this just really adds to it in a horrifying way. Fortunately, um, there is a post-exposure vaccine that has saved thousands and thousands of people, so if you are ever bitten by a wild animal, in particular a bat or a wild dog, uh, the important thing is that you immediately go to the doctor and get this post-exposure vaccine so that you can avoid contracting and dying from rabies. In the end, she sort of started looking like a barbarian character from like a video game, which wasn't necessarily my intention, but I think it really works, um, especially with like the bone armor and everything. I ended up adding like kind of an undershirt because I thought it was looking a little too fan y for me. Um, I wanted her to look sort of like wild and feral, but not in like a I don't know, like an, like an anime sexy way, <laughs> so um, I tried to sort of change that by the end of it, but um, overall I think her design of like her bodysuit and everything looks really cool. Um, I think that she looks pretty terrifying <laughs> and uh, totally uh, feral. Yeah, that was definitely something that was going through my head while I was designing her. I wanted her to look um, pretty dangerous because rabies is an incredibly dangerous and aggressive disease and any d disease that causes you to start acting aggressive and hyperactive is pretty scary as well because like I think one of the ultimate scary things about a disease is one that changes your personality or your behavior um, at least for me I don't know if that's <laughs> maybe just a me thing but there's something so horrible about thinking that like your last days on earth you're essentially not yourself um, that's definitely a troubling thought for me, so uh, that's one of the things that I think makes rabies extra scary. I don't know about you guys, but I've always had sort of a morbid interest in diseases, especially extreme ones like these. I was definitely a bit of a hypochondriac as a younger person, and it still flares up from time to time, uh, where I've convinced myself I have some terrible disease and only have months to live. <laughs> um, but when I was younger, it was definitely worse. I was constantly thinking that I had gotten tetanus from like barely scratching my knuckles on an aluminum can or something like that. Um, so that was one of the things that inspired this video. Also, I'm sick right now. I don't know if you can tell from my voice, but that was another factor. Next, I'm going to talk about meningitis. This is a disease that uh, it literally means like the inflammation of the membrane. And the membrane they're referring to is the membrane around your brain and your spinal cord. Uh, this is why this disease is incredibly threatening. Uh, meningitis is kind of like a disease and kind of like a symptom, um, but in general when someone has meningitis it's usually triggered by either like a bacteria or it can be caused by parasites as well, some other things. Um, but uh, meningitis usually starts with a brutal headache, which is why I've shown these like spikes going through her head. Um, I'm also trying to keep in mind this idea of membrane and swelling um, because this is the main feature of what meningitis is actually doing to your body. Uh, the symptoms that come along with it include a stiff neck. This is one of the most like signature signs that someone has meningitis is they can't really move their neck normally anymore. 
So I designed this sort of severe looking, very stiff neck cuff um, on this character, as well as I have this kind of spinal looking channel going down the front of her robes um, because this has to do with the spinal cord as well. I tried to really embed in all parts of her design this sort of like swelling, flowing membrane kind of energy, and I actually ended up putting her hood on a separate layer so that it could be semi-transparent and show parts of her hair while still covering up all of her skull really outside of her face. I decided to have her in this strange sort of pose, kind of like looking down commandingly at you. My core idea for this character um, was almost like an angel of death. Uh, I don't know why this necessarily came to me, I think it just went along with this big billowing kind of look, and I also recently watched Dune 2 and I'm just fascinated by the Bene Gesserit costume, so I think I might have accidentally put some inspiration from there as well. Some forms of meningitis are actually preventable by um, getting vaccinated as a young person, uh, so it's definitely avoidable, and there are cases where people can survive it, however it is definitely a medical emergency, again because it's involving your spine and your brain, and even if you do survive it, if you wait too long to get that swelling down, it can cause things like deafness and permanent cognitive damage, um, so if someone's showing signs of meningitis, especially a small child, it is critical to get them taken care of as soon as possible. Immunizing children against certain forms of meningitis have basically removed them from countries where these programs exist. However, in um, the meningitis belt, which exists in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, the vaccine is considered too expensive. I really wish that the countries of the world could like come together and get those vaccines to this area because they have outbreaks every single year. And I think it's a tragedy when there's a disease that we have such an effective vaccine for, but then there's an area where people are still being ravaged by it because they can't afford the vaccine. I think the whole world benefits when diseases like this are eliminated, so I think everyone has a stake and a reason to be interested in that. So here are all my disease-inspired designs. I hope you guys found this video interesting, and uh, apologize again for my sick voice, <laughs> um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Huge thank you to my wonderful patrons, including Twink on a Sink, Raccoon Jam, The Aidenverse, Scott Wilson, Grexius, Olia, Liddy Savior, Brandon Stark, CB, Cosby F, Lucy Amajiki, Liv Liv, Salty Jackrabbit, Raven's Crow, Zosalot, T Hill Music, Jabber Dabber Doo, Kadarius, Deadly Nightshade Art, Astral Fox Art, The Expressive Poker Face, Tsuvaki, Cutie Pie, Ice Cream Pal, JJ Jade, and of course, Blah 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 Blah.